Hello everybody, uh, this is Rachel with Healing in Our Homes and I'm so excited today to be interviewing a really special lady named Liz Steele and she's on our doTERRA team and uh, the other day we were chatting about Deep Blue because of the promo this month in our group, in our team group and she said something really fascinating and I had to go learn about her. Um, she has a really cool job working with animals um, and so I'm going to be asking her some questions today so you guys can learn along with me what she does, how she uses oils um, in the work um, she does with these amazing animals. And so thank you, Liz, for being here with us this morning. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm sure you have a million things to do out there, so we won't keep you too long. Um, but tell us, how long have you been using doTERRA? I started in 2013. Um, so it's been a few years. Yeah. But it's most recently that I really started um, incorporating it into all of all of my life. I guess you should say it started really personal, and um, and then now I just use it for everything. It's like I got an oil for that. I got an oil for that. So I need a shirt that says that. Yeah, I have an oil for that. <laughs> People kind of make fun of that cliche thing, but it's true. You really can't find an oil for. That is true. Um, I used to share a lot. When I first started, I, I was a teacher. And um, in my classroom, everyone knew that I had something for something that they were looking for. They didn't know what, mostly headaches and tension and such. And um, then I got the nickname, um, the voodoo doctor or the witch doctor. Oh, and let me look in my voodoo book, I would say, and everybody would laugh and, but they loved it, so. I love it. You teach what I, I, I taught special education. Okay. Actually, I did a lot of different different grades, but that's where I was the longest in special ed. And I wasn't in education for very long. So. But oils are so, my brother's autistic, and, um, and so oils are so, so powerful for them. I, I feel like especially, you know, for um, yes. calming their mind and their hearts. And yes. Well, you know, and the difficulty was, getting the um, permission to use use them. You had to be really careful about in the public school system. So, but I did, I, I did with permission, I did. There was a few um, kids that asked me, Miss um, Steele, are you magic? <laughs> I said, of course I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, love it. I, love it. I think you are. Um, so you work with a different group of, um, what, what's the word, mammals? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about what you do now. Oh, well, I have my own business, and um, I am actually a professional animal communicator. That's my my number one go to uh, career. Uh, but it's it's a standalone. I do that for people that um, come to me. They might have some issues with their animals, um, as far as behavior or some health issues. And they want to find out what what the root cause is. So I help them by communicating with their animals. I use that intuitively and um, through energy. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so that's standalone. And then I also use that um, animal communication with the other things that I do. For instance, um, I take care of some animals that are in um, recovery and rehab. They come and stay at my home for um, a period of time when they're people need support. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the horse has to be um, stalled because it has an injury and the people don't have a stall, they'll come to me and then I take care of them. And, um, or they come to me because they have some behavior issues. I have uh, a little mini mule right now that I work with and she hates people. <laughs> she hates everything, actually. Um, I, we don't know her history. She's a, a rescue. And so I work with her. And um, so I use the animal communication. And of course, I use oils. And so that's a big part of my business. And then of course, I'm a massage therapist for the equine, which I truly, truly love. And um, I go and I work on horses that are um, either performance horses, or they have injury, um, or their owners just like to have their horses in great condition. So that's what I do. That is so that is amazing. amazing. That's a lot of really cool stuff <laughs> that you get to do. Um, probably some people out there didn't know that there are massage therapists for horses. So now they know you've already taught them something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and anyone who's owned animals, especially animals bigger than you, 
knows that, you know, behavior can be a real problem if you get a horse or a donkey or something that um, has abuse in their past or gets injured or for some reason loses trust in you. It's really neat that they have you um, to help them. Yeah, that's really cool. I truly love it. It, um, it is. Those of you, a lot of you know, I'm sorry. Oops, you're breaking up a little bit. Long time. You just broke up a little bit. Say that part long time. Okay. What did you say? I think I just said pardon me because I couldn't hear you. No. <laughs> you broke up as well. Okay. Yeah, something happened there. Um, tell us the name of your Facebook page. Soft Heart Connections. That's what I do business as. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you guys can go and watch videos of her working with Braylee, who is the donkey that she's working with. Mule? Um, Mini mule, yes. Um, so just gain that trust slowly. Um, the post that originally piqued my interest was about Deep Blue Rub, and you made a comment about how um, that's one of your most used oils in massage. Will you tell us more about that? Yes. Um, well, I love Deep Blue. I use it for my sore muscles. Um, if I have a headache and I don't have my lavender and peppermint or my past tense with me, my Deep Blue is right on my neck and shoulders, and it's wonderful. And so when I started doing equine massage, which has just been about two years, um, I thought if it works this beautifully with me, then it's got to work beautiful on the horses, right? So um, I started using it. And so my job as a massage therapist is to find areas of concern that have a lot of tension or some knots um, where the blood flow isn't going well because it's got all that tension in there. And it's very common in horses' necks. Um, in their backs. It depends on what they do for a living, I guess. If they're a barrel racer, their necks are going to be sore. If they're, you know, if they just sit out in the pasture, they might be sore because they don't get enough exercise. So um, it just depends on what, what they do for um, in their day-to-day -day life. But so I find those areas and then I use deep blue on that and massage that in. And then I continue on my, the process. Then I can always go back and the muscle is a lot more supple and um, more comfortable for them when I use pressure to remove that, that knot. So it's really beneficial, smells wonderful, makes the barn smell good too, because <laughs> the humans will come in and go, oh, that smells so good. And um, it's really funny, but the horses love it too. I've had one horse that got nervous when I started to use, um, the deep blue because of the smell. And I use the deep blue rub. It just is easier for me to keep it in my back pocket and rather than, you know, mixing the, the deep blue with a carrier oil. It's just perfect. And yeah. so um, I had one horse that, and of course it was during a demo too. Uh, I was presenting oh. at the Blue Bonnet Horse Expo and there was this beautiful little mare I was working with and I had never met her before. And I pulled out the deep blue and she looked at me and took two steps sideways and I went, oh no. So then I had to work my magic, you know, because I had an audience and, um, but she loved it. Once I got started, it was like, oh, you could just see her whole body relax. So. Um, That's good to know, just because an animal reacts negatively at first, that doesn't mean that they, that you can't use that oil on them, right? Yes, exactly. Um, most most oils that I use, they love if you just give them an opportunity to, to smell it. So um, I wear it. If I'm going to use an oil on an animal, I wear it. I put it on my wrist and then they just associate that smell with me. So that helps. Yeah. For those of you who don't um, work with animals or horses, like a really helpful thing is to let them smell you first before you just come into their space and start touching it and stuff. So I'm sure you do that. So that's really cool that to, cool idea to put those oils on first so that they're associating you and eventually associating you with relief of pain and pressure and, and that yeah. type of thing. Um, I saw once in an, um, a webinar about horses, they were saying that out in the wild, they use their sense of smell to choose what herbs to eat. So if they have an upset stomach, they will go and find the herbs they need um, out in the wild and eat them. And so I always love that. I've seen videos of horses, you know, just absolutely freaking out when they smell something that they need. And it's just fascinating. I love it. So it's great that they respond that way to you. Um, one of the big things you do, and if you guys go look at her page, you'll see this as well, is... Um, you know, there's definitely a lot of people
people that approach horses with a, I'm in charge and you know, you better submit to me thing, which, you know, we want to have some sense of authority with horses because they're 1200 pounds and they can kill us. Um, <laughs> but one thing that Liz does that's really unique and different is um, approaching them with a soft heart and, and connecting with them. And if you've ever had a horse or been around horses, you know that that's a really powerful, special thing. All animals we can connect with in that way. Um, and so I was sharing with Liz that I kind of came in to having a horse again for the first time in like 20 years and before I was a child. So it was different, right? Cause I wasn't in charge. Now I'm in charge. And so I was nervous about having authority and kind of brought some, um, really nervous energy to my horse. So she gets nervous around me. And, um, I was sharing this with Liz that when I do, you know, hug her and calm her and connect with her, it's really sweet and beautiful, but sometimes she just, she gets really nervous with me. So, um, what oils do you use for horses or your dogs and cats that you work with that you find are most calming for them? My first go-to oil is Serenity, and I love it. And I think it's because it was the first oil I ever used. Yeah. And, um, and so it's very calming. Um, so my go-to, first off, um, I love Balance. Balance is a really nice um, blend that helps calm and of course I use lavender and Lang Lang. I love Lang Lang. I think that's how you say it, right? It is, I used to hate the smell of it. And now I absolutely love the smell of it. And um, that is my, the Braley that I work with, that is her favorite oil. That was the one that made the biggest difference. It was the third one I tried. So um, those are my go-to oils. Those are the ones that I carry with me when I go anywhere that I work with animals. I and of that. course, I people. Have I wouldn't have thought that oil, so that's really cool. Well, you know, Lang Lang is, um, has, a, of course, a various benefits, but one of it is to release fear. Mm -hmm. And so when an animal has had a lot of contact with humans or even other animals that are aggressive or just have this background of, of not being treated the way that it should be treated, there's a lot of fear there. And so what's the best way to get rid of fear is patience and some great um, oils that help with that. So yeah. that's definitely a go-to. Well, I'll share a little story about Lang Lang. For me, when I was pregnant with my fifth, I had had a very devastating miscarriage before her where I um, passed out at home from the bleeding and had to be taken in by ambulance and all these things. And so um, I was understandably very afraid of something happening to her. And um, I, my upline did a scan on me and I scanned for only one oil and it was Ylang Ylang. And um, physically, Ylang Ylang is very good for our hearts, for if, you know, if people have heart issues or, or different things going on, um, but emotionally the same for our hearts. And so I carry that Ylang Ylang with me my entire pregnancy. It was my go-to when I felt anxious. It gives me the chills just even now because it was so powerful for me. Um, I was so afraid of something happening and, and imagine these worst case scenarios. And so after I had her and she was breathing and I still, um, you know, listened to her breathe for like years because <laughs> she was so, so precious to me, but I actually didn't need the Ylang Ylang anymore after she was born. And so, um, I totally, you know, believe you. That's a really powerful work for the heart and for fear. And um, I'm excited to take it out to Mia and see. She, I got the bounce out the other day. She doesn't like to go in the stall. It was storming. And I got the bounce out again, and she stepped way away from me. Um, and I've been putting it on her at night. So I'm going to take some other ones out and just let her smell it. Is that what you would recommend? Let her just yeah. smell this? Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, sometimes just taking it out with you or putting a dab on so when you go and feed and they will literally if they like that scent or it's supposed to be something that they if it's something they need she'll start smelling around you I have another mare who is she's a little higher strung and she just she gets nervous about things and she has terrible separation anxiety from the herd and she also loves Ylang Lang I walk by and when I, after I get done working with Braley and she'll just stick her head, she licks me and everything. So I'm, I'm using that with her now whenever I can, because it must be something that she needs because she seeked it out on me 
when I wasn't even trying. So um, just wearing different oils and see how your animals respond, whether it's a horse or a dog or a cat and, and see, and then remember, you just take note of it and say, you know what, Jessie loved that smell. So I'm gonna wear that the next time I go out and brush her. So, and that's what I do. I just kind of observe and pay attention. That's not saving it just for when, you know, a storm's coming or something that they could associate with bad, but doing it just when you're going to brush them or feed them. Or yeah. That's really good. Um, and just so everybody knows, because people worry a lot about this, I saw that you do have a vet you work with, right, that um, uses oils. Is that correct? So you yeah. kind of check with them safety-wise? Actually, I'm a member of her site. So I'm looking, I'm learning, I'm always, because safety, of course, is number one. And I still use a vet and a doctor if I need to do so. So um, absolutely. But the benefits of oils are just incredible. And if you can have the support from your vet with that, perfect. Yeah. My vet thinks I'm wonky, but he supports me. <laughs> he's, he's not quite on board yet. Um, he's pretty old school, but he, uh, he comes out to the house. And um, he's seen what the oils have done, especially for a cut my dog, one dog gave to another. Um, really, really incredible results there. So yeah, for those of you that are concerned about safety, you know, you need to look all that stuff up. Um, I have references on my website that I wrote with the help of Dr. Rourke and then Dr. Janet Rourke also has resources on her website. Is that who you, who's good yes. with? Yes, um, ma'am. <laughs> um, and so um, that's a great place for safety. You know, cats have to be the most careful. Most things are safe for dogs. You can look that up. There's a few to avoid and then horses um, being huge you can use almost every oil on them so look that up for your own personal use but um, generally very safe and they and they let you know what they want to do um, so you posted about worming your horses with essential oils and I was like oh I've got to ask her about that um, not surprised since you know Julie Julie does the coolest things with her horses to interview her sometime um, really powerful stories there with, you know, how they use them, but um, how do you do that? Well, I will tell you that it's a new protocol for me. Julie is a friend of mine and um, she is also my enroller and um, she has been a wealth of information. So I haven't technically started it yet because I just, I had just wormed my horses and, um, but the next, the next haul we will be doing that and basically what it is is um, you continue to put it into a syringe just like you normally would um, worm your horses with a syringe and you put um, let's see I want to make sure I got it correct so I wrote it down so I had it it's three to four drops of digestin and three drops of oregano and then you can use three or four drops of on guard or clove oil either one of those is fine and then you mix that with two tablespoons of coconut oil. And um, she just uses the regular kitchen coconut oil and then just softens it up or, or um, liquefies it and put it in a syringe and give it a shot. If there's mm -hmm. active parasites, then you can do that a couple of times in a day and then every day for like a week. Mm -hmm. And then if it's just maintenance or preventative, then you can do it every every six, eight weeks on a regular schedule, just like you would a regular wormer. So Aww. that's the protocol. And I can't yeah. wait to get started. I know that Julie uses them on um, all of the animals. Chickens, she uses a little bit different. Um, um, less. <laughs> yes, a little bit less, yes. But yeah. at least one drop. And I'm just gonna throw this out here. Animals like, um, uh, rabbits or those little small pocket pets, you have to be really, really careful. They have very, very sensitive respiratory systems. Mm -hmm. So make sure if you have rabbits, um, get with um, a vet or someone who specializes in animals and oils and make sure that you're doing the right dilution and the right oils. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Be careful with your animals, do your research. Um, and we're not saying that essential oils can replace your medication for your animals. But we're not at all. <laughs> that, they, uh, <laughs> that there are options, natural options, when you're looking at how to care for your pets. So um, I'm going to be careful how I speak about this so we can keep this up here. But you have a kitty cat. Is, are they still right there? Yeah, he's laying on the chair by me. <laughs> can you show him to us? Oh, he yeah. bought me water. His, pardon me? 
Will he be bothered if you bother him? No. <laughs> Can you <I> speak? <laughs> He's going, no, this is Crow. Oh, can you see him okay? <laughs> I can see his ears. Oh, let's see. There he is. Hi. He's my sweet boy. Oh, he sleeps at my head at night. He lays on my lap constantly. I can't really do anything without him. When I go feed the horses, he's out there with me. If I go out to the pond, he sits on my lap by the pond. He's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's so cute. So thank you. He has um, some neurological issues he needs support for. Um, he might have symptoms that we would see, you know, jerking body movements or concerning um, symptoms like that. And so when that happens and he needs some support, you use? Frankincense. Frankincense. Yes. And let me tell you, what an amazing thing. He's, I've had him for about three years. And he has had these episodes. Um, I remember the first time he had it scared me to death. I've taken him to the vet um, and they didn't think that he needed medication at that time. And um, they said, just, just support him when, when you'd see him in, you know, having an episode. He gets very stiff, his legs um, curl up. So they, they bring up, his whiskers go completely forward, his eyes dilate, wow. um, and then he falls because he can't support his body weight. So um, I pick him up and I hold him close and then I put a dab of frankincense on my finger and I rub a paw, doesn't matter, front, back, and literally in seconds, the stiffness starts mm -hmm. to relax and then, um, his whiskers are the last thing that, that come back in his eyes. And then he starts to purr. And then mm -hmm. after a few seconds of purring, um, you can see his eyes starting to go and his whiskers starting to go back to, to where they're supposed to be on the sides, not poking out in front of him. And then uh -huh. you can just feel in my arms, I can just feel him totally relax. And it's in a matter of seconds. He used to have these episodes that would last maybe 20 to 30 minutes. And now it's maybe at the most 45 to 60 seconds. Wow. So I keep it around the house everywhere. <laughs> sure, that's incredible. Yes. And they've gotten actually further apart too. Um, but he really doesn't have a rhythm. Um, it isn't like every other day or every two weeks. It could be two weeks one time and two days another time. But it seems like it's spanning a little bit more each as we go. Yeah. Um, and, um, did they start before or after you got essential oils? Um, well, I've only, I've been, you mean since oh, I started? three years. You've had them three years. Yes. So, yes. Uh, but you use essential oils every day so just to clarify for everybody they're not being caused by that oh no 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 not at all i use them all the time um and i have i have two cats two dogs a duck four <laughs> horses a mini donkey i have it all so and i use essential oils around all of them not so much my duck because he doesn't like to come too close, but, um, but they're always on me. So, and I have not had any problems and he came from a shelter. All of my animals are rescues by the way. So I don't know what their history are. Um, I, I don't know. So I can only do what I can from the moment I get them yeah. for the rest of their lives. So yeah. and cats, I don't know he what he's been exposed to physically gone through. Cats are so sensitive and you know, so many people worry about <clears throat> essential oils, which that we should be careful and, and use care and let them have an escape route and all those kinds of things. But cats have a hard time filtering everything. So if they're in a home with chemical cleaners and chemical f chemicals on the floor and scents and things like that is just as hard on them, probably well, way more hard than the, on them than essential oils are. Essential oils yes. are natural. Um, and so if you have a cat at all, you should be aware of everything that they're breathing in. Um, especially chemical fragrance. And so I just wanted to clear up that that is not from oils. Um, and that's really neat that the more you use, you know, have used the frankincense on him, the less he's had. So yeah. That's Makes really happy. Really cool. Oh, I love it. And, he, and you always have oils. Cats are intuitive like horses and dogs are. So, you know, you always have oils.
feels on you and he always wants to be with you. So obviously there's, yeah. No problem. Oh, love that. Um, do you have any other oil tips for using oils with horses for us? Um, oh boy. I use it for everything you can use. Um, there's different recipes that you can make for sprays or a salve that um, you can use for their hoofs. Mm -hmm. I make a salve with calendula flowers, dried flowers. They are amazing. And it's just another way actually of showing that plants um, and the leaves of the plants are, are beneficial. But I use um, dried calendula flowers, which helps with their anti-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory and they also can calm and soothe wounds and protect um, ulcers on your skin and so I use that um, soaked in oil and then I use lavender and frankincense and sometimes melaleuca which melaleuca you have to be careful with with some um, dogs and cats I just want to point that out um, so I make different salves with different versions of um, of oils and then I use that for everything so if you have a wound um, on yourself my grandchildren or my horse that salve is what I pull out to use depending on what um, I need it for um, let's see oh, I got a great story about the last horse that I had um, he had a large area I mean large it was like this on his face it was um, sarcoids which is, they look like warts and they're caused from um, sun damage. Some horses get them, some do not. It is basically cancer, supposedly. Um, I think there's still some uh, debate about that, but it is an invasive cancer. But he had this and um, he was here for medical reasons. He couldn't travel because he had had some surgery, but he also had these sarcoids on his face. And the um, salve that they were using to treat him caused horrible blisters. It was like putting chemo on your face. And, and so um, I asked permission from the, um, the owner if I could also use essential oils and maybe do some rotation because he was getting to where he did not want me to put the salve on his face. It was very, very mm -hmm. sore. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, that would be great. So I started with um, a little bit of lavender mixed with um, fractionated coconut oil. And I used that on his face first and soothed it a little bit. And then the scab started falling off. So then I did, um, the next day I would do, I would alternate. So the next day I used frankincense with fractionated coconut oil and I would just smooth it on his face. And then the next day I would use some of my salve with um, the lavender oil in it. And I believe I used the one with the melaleuca too. And I just did every other day. His face was beautiful. Then I would take the medicine that the vet gave mm -hmm. that blistered and I would make sure it only went on just the lumps. Mm -hmm. When he went home, he had a smooth, beautiful skin face and he was actually starting to grow a little bit of hair back. So, um, so much so that the owner said, can I buy some of that salve that you're using? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, you know, sometimes when people see it, it's like, wow. It was a combination. Yeah. That medicine definitely needed to have that get rid of those lumps, but the irritation and all the things, the blistering that went with it, the essential oils were fabulous in helping that. So, what a perfect example of using both. And because um, if he, you know, had just kept using the vet's medicine, could have scarred, could have not ever gotten hair back, and, and all that yes. kind of stuff. And it was very hard to treat because he didn't want you to touch his face. Yeah. And in the beginning, it was, he was okay. It was like, oh, sure, you can do this. But then when he started blistering and it started getting inflamed and sore, it was like, get away from me. So, yeah. yeah. Which so, be great. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> That's a perfect, perfect example. I actually use that. Um, uh wound recipe from julie because she kept cutting back of one of her feet she did it twice i don't know how she did it but um man i just cleared it right up there help that skin you know do its thing and and get better and then um i kept it in the bucket and so the other day i just i sprayed her hooves with it i cleaned her feet out because all the oils have you know properties that help protect against um the yucky stuff they get from their feet being wet all the time because we've had a ton of rain 
Um, and I had one blend that I was using for that for her hose specifically, but I was out there. So, you know, I just sprayed it on everything. I sprayed it on her hose. I actually sprayed it in her mane to calm it down because it was, you know, flying up in the air. And, and she gets super calm. I put it in her forelock. You start <laughs> laughing and all and her head just gets lower and lower and lower because it's so calming for her. So, um, I love it. I love it. I love all the things that you can do. So thank you for helping us uh, inspire people to use oils with their pets and, and see what they can do. Thank you for sharing your unique jobs with us because uh, it's beautiful. Please go check out her Facebook page. Tell us that one more time because I have a terrible memory. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's Soft Heart Connections. Soft and I also have a website, softheartconnections.com. So please come and visit. And, and if I can help you with something, I would love to help you. Yeah, you can go learn from her. She is. Uh, it's really neat to watch the videos and watch her gaining the trust of these animals and doing it in a soft, kind way and using her oils um, as well. So thank you so much, Liz, for your time today. We appreciate you. Uh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you.